hi friends welcome to HTL lectures in our previous lecture we have gone through two topics two chapters of CA foundation economics in this chapter we will be discussing the questions relating to those topics the study material problems of chapter 1 that will be discussed in today's lecture so let us go through the first question first one is about decision making economics regard decision making as an important as important because why they think that because is required to satisfy unlimited wants because you have scarce resources since you have a scarcity of resources and with this scarcity of resources you will have to satisfy your unlimited wants so there is a requirement of decision making and second point it is a it is critical to understand how we can best allocate how we can allocate our resources our scarce resources to satisfy the society's unlimited wants so there is also a decision making so that is also correct from this itself you can understand the option can be d the resources have alternative use that is also the third point is also correct that is also part of decision making because a product can be used for more than one usage or one uh, purpose so you will be using those product for the best combination or for the best option because that will be giving you the maximum utilization or maximum benefit so you will be allocating resources based on those utilities so there is also decision making involved so option d is the correct answer then second one business economics business economics business economics is abstract and applies the tool of microeconomics i don't know let us check then second one involves practical application of economic theory in business decision making yeah is it correct yes involves practical application of economic theories in business decision making see business economics is a practical application of economic theory that we have already discussed and c incorporates tools from multiple discipline yes it incorporate tools from multiple disciplines like uh, statistics uh, interdisciplinary it is a, we call it as an interdisciplinary because it uses more than one discipline yeah so that is also correct so b and c is correct why a is not correct business economics is not an abstract it applies the tools of microeconomics right but it is not an abstract it is completely microeconomics almost 90 percentage or major portion of the microeconomics is involved in business economics so it is not just an abstract it is a comprehensive point of microeconomics so that is a wrong answer or business economics is not an abstract we can say so option d is the correct answer next one yes next one in economics we use the term scarcity to mean what is it an absolute scarcity is it as a relative scarcity what is absolute scarcity absolute scarcity is something that we see in the less developed countries but scarcity can be in economics the economic scarcity can be seen in developed and underdeveloped or developing countries every country will have scarcity or the scarcity which is discussed in economics it is not an absolute scarcity definition we are not talking about absolute scarcity here we are talking about relative scarcity in economics what is relative scarcity i am relating the scarcity with me if i have certain amount with this amount how can i satisfy my, uh, my want with my limited resources so this is a relative scarcity i am relating it with something else i cannot say that uh, there is absolute scarcity for a particular product i cannot say that there is a scarcity of water 
but i can say that since i don't have money i cannot buy water so according to me that water is a scarce resource for me but it is not an absolute scarcity it is a relative scarcity so i hope you understand option b is the correct answer i don't think other are required to be read scarcity during times of business fails and natural calamities it's not uh, scarcity caused on account of excessive composition by the rich no this is not correct next one what implications does scarcity uh, uh, does resource scarcity have for the satisfaction of want first one not all wants can be satisfied is it correct yes we will never be faced with needs to make choice is that statement correct no we will always have to make choice because you cannot buy all product you need to take make choice it is not never there there is some choices required we must develop way to decrease our individual wants no we will have always have unlimited wants so that is also not correct that is also not a economic point of view the discovery of new natural resources necessary to increase our ability to satisfy see we don't want to make this big challenges for reducing our scarcity the first point is a correct one not all wants can be satisfied no one will be satisfied with what they have they will always have a scarcity so that is the implication of satisfaction of wants next one which of the following is a normative statement see whenever there are some questions i think four or five questions relating normative and positive economics so for understanding for understanding the clear picture regarding the positive and normative economics please watch my video on positive and normative economics which i will give description uh, i will give a link in the description so you can watch that first and you can come to this question which of the following is a normative statement the planned economy allocate resources via government departments most transitional economies have experienced problem of falling out and rising price over the past decades there is a great decree of consumer sovereignty in market economy than planned economy reducing inequality should be a major priority should be should be should be whenever you have something to make decision on or you have to uh, decide on you have to judge something then there is a requirement of normative economics normative is not about the current scenario with this current scenario what is going to happen that is what we are discussed in the normative economics or normative statement so reducing inequality should be the major priority so inequality is a problem that is a positive economics studying about inequality is a positive economics but in order to overcome that whatever you are doing that is a normative economics okay i hope you understood so option d is the correct answer next one in every economic system scarcity imposes limitation on households yes business firms yes governments yes nation as a whole yes second option households business but not government not correct so option a is the correct answer 
I don't think we have to read other points. Local and state government, but not federal government. Household. Uh, this this is not just a government problem. This is a problem of the economy. Uh, then households and governments, but not business uh, business uh, firms, government, nation. It's just option A is the correct answer, so you can go for that. Next one, macroeconomics is also called what? I can hear you saying aggregate economy. I know that you all know what is macroeconomics. It is an aggregate economy. We are studying the economy as a whole as an aggregate right yes simple question next one an example of positive economics see the second question regarding positive economics analysis would be this is positive an analysis of the relationship between price of goods and quantity produced is it a positive economics let us read this next one determine how much income each person should be guaranteed here should be is used so it is not a positive economics this is not the correct option because it is talking about normative economics should be determining the fair price for food determining is not an activity of positive economics Positive economics is stating a fact. So we have to state a fact here. Here determining the price of for food is not a fact but it is an activity that have to be done. That is not yet done. So that is also not positive economics. Deciding how to distribute the output of the economy this is also not a normal positive economics this all relates to normative economics the first option is the correct answer analysis of the relationship between the price of the food and quantity purchased this is the relationship here we are studying about a fact we are analyzing a fact the relationship between price and quantity purchased so there is a positive economics a study of how increase in the corporate income tax rate will affect the national unemployment rate is an example of a study of how increase in the corporate income tax rate will affect the national unemployment rate is an example of what is that see whenever you see an income tax rate or national unemployment rate national unemployment rate it is a macroeconomics because we are studying the aggregate economy so it is a nationwide economy we are talking about so it is a macroeconomics next one which of the following does not suggest a macro approach for india determining gnp is it a macro approach yes GNP is a macro finding the causes of failure of ABC limited ABC that means an individual firm or company identifying the cause of inflation that is also a big word so it is a macroeconomics analysis of cause of failure of industry in providing large-scale employment employment problem in the industry so which one is the option B does not suggest a macro approach for India option B because it is just a small company in India ABC limited so it is not a macroeconomic problem of India Ram my corn harvest this year is poor Ram says that his corn harvest is poor Krishnan, don't worry, price increases 
will compensate for the foreign quantity supplied. We know the climate affects crop yields. Some years are bad, others are good. Madhu, government ought to guarantee that our income will not fall. In this conversation, the normative statement is made by who is that guy? See, there is a word called ought to. Ought to is an alternative word used for should be. Should be. It's an alternative word used for should be. So it is a normative statement. Mr. Madhu is a normative person. Next one. Consider the following and decide which if any economy is without scarcity. Without scarcity, is there any economy? Pre-independent Indian economy. No, before independence also, India was in scarcity. A mythical economy where everybody is a billionaire. Billionaire will not make the economy uh, rich with resources. Even if you have cash or if you are billion, there are possibilities of non-existence of important things like water, like air, like food, nutritious food and all. So that is not a case. An economy where income is distributed equally among its people. Income have nothing to do with scarcity. Because scarcity is something which is natural. Income is something that we earn. And with this income, you can not, you cannot increase the scarce resources. Right? So, none of the above is the option. Next one. Option, this question number 13. Which of the following is not a subject matter of microeconomics? National economies. Sorry. The price of mangoes. Price of mango is always a microeconomy. The cost of production is also a microeconomic thing. Quantity of mango is also a microeconomic thing. National economy is not a microeconomic thing. It is a macroeconomic thing. So option D. Then for, sorry, 14th. Branch of economic theory that, that will deals with the problem of allocation of resources. What is that? You all know allocation of resources that we are studying in microeconomic theory. The subject matter of microeconomics is the existence of scarcity. Scarcity leads to allocation of resources. Next one. Which of the following is not the subject matter of business economics? Let us see. Should our firm be in this business? This is exactly subject matter of business economics. They should be thinking about this question. It's a problem. How much should be, uh, should be produced and at what price? That is also their problem. It is also a business problem. So it should be there in the business economics. How will the product be placed in the market? That is also very important. How should we decrease unemployment in the economy? This is not your problem, man. This is problem of the government or the economy. So, macroeconomy. So, this is not the subject matter of business economics. Next one. Which of the following is a normative economic statement? I think this is the third question on positive and normative economics. Unemployment rate decreases with industrialization this is a fact so this is a positive economics economics is a social science and that studies human behavior this is also a fact the minimum wage should be should be should be used so it is a normative economics 
India spends a huge amount. This is a fact. It's a positive. So option C is the correct answer. Next one. Which of the following would be considered? Which of the following would be considered a topic of study? Topic of study in macroeconomics. Macroeconomic study. So the effect of increase in wage on the profitability of cotton industry. See, this is profitability of cotton industry. Studying about an industry. I think I have already discussed an industry is a microeconomic point. Steel price is a problem of steel industry. Increasing inflation rate. Inflation rate is something that cannot be done by an individual uh, unit of an economy. It is a macroeconomic point. So option C. I don't think option D need to be read it. Price of coffee and quantity. This is all my microeconomics. I think you get a grip on this topic. This is very easy topic and uh, you can expect more questions from these basic points instead of always test on basic points rather than going through the in-depth points. Next question. The difference between positive and normative economics. First one. Positive economics explains the performance of economy while normative economics finds out the reason for poor performance. I don't think that positive and normative talks about the performance. I don't think so. That is not the point. Positive economics describes a fact. Positive economics describes a fact. Normative economics involves evaluating whether some of these goods are bad welfare of the society whether the fact is good or bad that is what we are discussing in the normative economics so option b is the right answer next one which of the following is not within the scope of business economics capital budgeting capital budgeting something which is relating to the decision making regarding whether you have to buy this product or not so all this part of business economics Risk analysis, yes, risk analysis is also part of business economics. Business cycle, yes, you have to decide based on the business cycle. Accounting standard, why we have to study about accounting standard in economics? There is no such point. So it is not a business economics point. Which of the following statement is incorrect? First one. Business economics is normative in nature. Very, very correct. Business economics is normative in nature. Business economics has a close connection with statistics. Yes, we have some statistics used in the business economics to take decisions. Business economics need not worry about macro variables. In business economics, we are not worrying about the macro variables. See, this is not exactly correct answer because we are also using some variables of macro in our business economics. But when we compare with other options, this option is comparatively an option best option to be chosen d is a business economics also called managerial economics yes so option c is the right answer because it does not worry about the macroeconomics at a big extent it is just taking some variable uh, macro variables next one Economic goods are considered scarce resource because they cannot be increased in quantity. Economic goods are considered scarce resource because they cannot be increased in quantity. No, that is not the answer do not exist in adequate quantity to satisfy the requirement of the society 
yes i think this can be the correct answer economic goods are considered scarce because scarcity they, they are asking the definition of scarcity does not exist an adequate quantity of uh, to satisfy the requirements of the society see there are very limited resources for satisfying the unlimited ones that is the good point of this root cause of this point so this is explained in option b so that is a definition of scarcity so that is the right, uh, right answer section sorry question 22 in a free market economy allocation of resources done is determined by consumer's preference consumer is the king in a free market economy free market economy means an economy where private sectors have a freedom of production and the consumers can prefer whatever they want so consumer is the king in that economy so consumers preference is a root cause of the allocation of resources you will allocate the resources based on the requirements of the consumer so consumer preference is the first priority there the next one a capitalist economy uses dash as principal means of allocating resources what is that capitalist economy uses demand no what is a capitalist economy it is an economy where government controls the goods or the market so demand demand is not their area and supply they are also not supplying they will not control the supply they will always control the price they can control the price government will say that you have to sell at this point you have to buy at this point and all this can be done by the government so price is the means of allocating resources in a capitalist economy next one which of the following is considered as a disadvantage of allocating resources using the market system see i know that you don't like reading this question but what they ask is that disadvantages of market system what is market system that is a market economy or free market economy or the market which is controlled by the private sector so what are the disadvantages let us see income will tend to be unevenly distributed yes it is one of the point that we have discussed the income in a market economy will be unevenly distributed the rich will be rich and poor will be poor so people do not get goods of their choice no in market economy they will get uh, their choice because in the previous question also we have said that there is a consumer's preference so the market uh, the consumers will get whatever they want so there is always a choice for them men of initiative and enterprises are not rewarded profit will tend to be low option a is the correct answer unevenly distributed which of the following statement does not apply to market economy first one firms decide whom to hire and what to produce in a market economy what do you do firms decide whom to hire and what to produce yes the firm can decide whatever they want whatever they want to hire and whatever they want to produce they will decide firms aim at maximizing profit yes in a market economy they use maximizing profit profit maximization is a feature household decide which firm to work for and want to buy with their income households also have their choice on what to buy and what not to buy fourth one government policies are the primary force that guides the decision of the firm and household this is wrong 
because in a market economy there is no government policy or government policy have nothing to do with a market economy so option d is the correct answer next one in a mixed economy all economic decisions are taken by central all economic decisions are taken by private all economic decisions are partly taken by state and partly by private so option c is the right answer because in mixed economy we have both private and central sector option c 27 question number 27 what it says the central problem in economy is that of comparing the success of command versus market economy no man we are not talking about command economy here a central problem in economy is not the problem of centrally planned economy or market economy guaranteeing that production occurs in the most efficient manner no that is also not correct guaranteeing a minimum level of income for every citizen that is also not a central problem in economy next one allocating scarce resources in such a manner that unlimited wants can be satisfied that is a correct answer what is the central problem of economy what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce and what quantity to be made so this is a utilization of unlimited wants or utilization of limited resources for your unlimited wants so this is option d next one capital intensive technique would get chosen in a capital intensive technique what is capital intensive technique in how to produce point of a central problem of economy i have discussed capital intensive technology capital intensive technology means technique means you use machineries rather than labors for your production so here labor surplus economy over the relative price of capital is lower that is wrong we are not talking about labor surplus economy second one capital surplus economy yes over the relative price of capital is low when the capital is low when the price of capital is low you will be using capital surplus economy or you can, you will be using capital intensive technology in that economy we are not uh, taking the capital intensive or labor intensive based on the developing or developed economy so the option c and d is not the correct answer next one which of the following is not one of the four central questions that the study of economy is supposed to answer see central problems of economy that is what is explained here but in different words or it is expressed in the way which is not to be expressed what do i say who produce what that means what to produce is a problem when are goods produced is there any question regarding when in a central problem of economy no so this is the option i think who consumes what what to produce for whom to produce and how to produce goods how to produce means whether capital or labor intensive so option b when the goods should be produced that is not dealt in a four central questions next one larger production of dash goods would lead to higher production in future if you want more production in future then you have it to invest more in the capital goods you have to invest more in the capital goods so if you invest more in the capital goods that is machineries roads and all so you will be benefiting in the future also for this type of goods next one the economic system 
in which all the means of production are owned and controlled by private sector easy chapter easy questions private sector means what capitalism now macroeconomics is a study of all aspect of scarcity no national income and the global income as a whole yes big business no no the decision of individual business no so option b the economic national economy or global economy is the option next one freedom of choice is the advantage of what economy capitalist economy in capitalist economy you have freedom of what to choose exploitation and inequalities are minimal under socialism because government control is more in a socialist economy so exploitations will be very less next the last question administered price what is administered price price determined by force of demand and supply demand and supply is not an administered price it is always changing so it is not a the answer price determined by seller in the market no it is not something that the seller fix that is also not an administered price price determined by the external authorities or the government that is what administered price means administered price means price fixed by the government i hope you all enjoyed this video if you are really benefiting from this video please support my channel and if you have any doubt regarding this chapter any point on this chapter please put it on the comment box i will be reading and i will be giving you the uh, answer to those questions so thank you friends thanks for watching this video please subscribe and share for your friends also